Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. On the, the uh, overheads, you see four little words. Repeat them with me loudly. He is, he is alive. alive. Hallelujah. The confusion of Thursday is past. The gloom and sadness of Friday is gone. The uncertainty of Saturday is over because now we know he said is true. He is alive. He is risen. Hallelujah. Well, Let us clear away the black and make our sanctuary bright and beautiful with white drapes and flowers. Bring flowers and place on the communion table. Now you're saying, but where are these flowers? Well, they're back in here. We need help. Come up. Anybody who wants to come and help, get up and help if you are able. We need people to strip all the black out of here. Would you like to help drape the cross? Somewhere there's an end. It goes over top of this one. <laughs> Missed. But not to hand hand them out to people. Hand them out to people. Gee, we're good. <laughs> Hang it down the front. Yep, we're there. When you get some flowers, bring them up and put them on the communion table. Thanks. On the communion table, on the floor, anywhere around, just to brighten our sanctuary. knees this way. Of course. I like putting everybody to work. It's a good day to work. Sure. While we're decorating, listen to these words. The resurrection from Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome came with spices so, so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb and they asked each other, who will roll away the stone from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the, sto the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be afraid, he said. You are looking for Jesus of Nazarene, the Nazarene. He was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. 
see the place where they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. Thank you. Now that you've worked, look at this beautiful sanctuary. Let us sing our first hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Uh, Voices United, number 155.
Just barely. But it's there. I'm lighting the Christ candle from the peace candle that I received from the United Church in Whitehorse. This day is a joyous day. We gather this morning in the presence of the risen Christ whose love and peace gives light to our paths and hope to our days. In the light of our Christ candle, the joy of our hearts is rekindled this day. John 8, verse 12, says, When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of light. And the next hymn is number 159, The Strife is O'er. This is a, an oldie.
temptation and, and transform our helplessness into the fragile beginnings of hope. You take the bleakness of our Easter Saturdays and the weariness of defeat and desolation and transform our despair into the will and courage to go on. You take the grieving of our early morning, the fearful approach to the tomb, and transform our bewilderment into the breathless excitement for new life. On this Easter Sunday, renew us and resurrect our lives, O God, and let us celebrate the renewal of hope, of life, and love in this world once more. In the name of your Son, the Resurrected One, we pray. Amen. And we're going to sing again. But this is a song that I know somebody in the congregation will really appreciate. <laughs> we aren't mentioning any names, Wayne. Yeah. Um, Morning Has Broken, number 409. Now we'll hear scripture from Elma. Our psalm this morning is number 118, which is in your bulletin, or on page 837, Voices United. And it's hallelujah, hallelujah refrain. Israel now say, God's love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, God's love endures forever. Let those who fear God say, God's love endures forever. God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. And there are shouts of joy and deliverance in the tents of, of the righteous. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. The right hand of God does mighty things. 
I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. God indeed punished me, but do not give me over. to me the gates of the temple that I may enter and give thanks to God. This is the gate of God. Through it, Christ shall enter. I thank you for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad. Our second reading is from Mark 16, verses 1 to 8, the resurrection. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb, and they asked each other, Who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away, and they entered the tomb. They saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You are looking for Jesus the Nazarene, who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. In the garden of tombs. 
That was a wow one. <laughs> Thank you, choir. Thank you, Azriel, for coming and accompanying us with your lovely keyboard. Thank you, Troy. Thanks. You're welcome. You're not done. Oh, okay. <laughs> one of the different things that happens in some churches is that they have what they call an agape meal. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to share an agape meal. The word agape is a Greek word used in the New Testament for the highest and broadest kind of self-giving love. Agape calls attention to the limitless and overflowing fullness of divine love, love of the one who suffered and died on the cross. An agape meal, or a love fest, as it is also called, is an ancient tradition of the hospitality which Abraham showed to his three unknown visitors. Wrong one. Genesis 18, verses 1 to 7, the three visitors. The Lord appeared to Abraham near the great trees of Mamre while he was sitting at the entrance to his tent in the heat of the day. Abraham looked up and saw three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he hurried to the entrance of his tent to meet them and bowed low to the ground. He said, If I have found favor in your eyes, my Lord, do not pass your servant by. Let it a little water be brought and then you may all wash your feet and rest under this tree. Let me give you something to eat so you can be refreshed and then go on your way now that you have come to your servant. Very well, they answered. Do as you say. So Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah. Quick, he said, get three selahs of fine flour and knead it and bake some bread. Then he ran to the herd and selected a choice tender calf and gave it to the servant 
who hurried to prepare it. Then he brought some curds and milk and the calf that had been prepared and set be these before them. While they ate, he stood near them under a tree. That's Abraham with his three visitors. Now, if you were um, with us at the Seder meal, our friends leave a glass of wine on a table. And that glass of wine is for Elijah. And at some point in, this, um, in the meal, someone goes to the door, as Chris did, and held the door open in hopes that Elijah would come in and drink the wine. Now, during their Seder meal, um, Michael was saying that just to uh, make the little children wonder, they would shake the table and the wine would jiggle and they would sort of wonder about that one. In the early days, this meal was a time of fellowship. Communion as celebrated that the Last su Supper was often part of these meals, but they are not the same. An agape meal is a meal that does not require an ordained person. These meals seek to strengthen community, harmony, and goodwill. These meals usually include an opportunity to acknowledge our need for forgiveness. It is another way to live out the commandment that we love one another with the same love, mercy, and forgiveness with which he has and is still loving us. In our agape meal today, you will be gifted an individual serving of fruit, bread, and water. These will be distributed by um, a few of our members. For those who are worshiping with us at home, you are invited to partake with us. Another water here in case we need it, but I don't think we will. It's heavy. Brian. While these gifts are being distributed, hear these words. Exodus 16, verses 2 and 3. In the desert, the whole community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, If we had died by the Lord's hand in Egypt, there they we sat around pots of meat and ate all the food we wanted. But you have brought us out into this desert to starve this entire assembly to death. Verse 11. The Lord said to Moses, I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, at twilight you will eat meat, and in the morning you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord your God. When the Israelites saw it, they said to each other, What is this? For they did not know what it was. The people of Israel called the bread manna, and it was white like coriander seed and tasted like wafers made with honey. Moses said, This is what the Lord has commanded. Take an omer of manna and keep it for the generations to come so they can see the bread that I have given you to eat in the desert when I brought you out of Egypt. That was about the bread. 
The water, Exodus 17, verses 1 to 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for, for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people. Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and the water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Before we partake, let us sing our grace, which is printed on the overhead. thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for the food that nourishes us and for Jesus, who is our living bread. We thank you for the water that quenches our thirst and for your living water. May we feel your loving presence now and always. Let us eat in silence.
Thank you, Margo. Finish what you will. If you want to finish your bread and your water, that's fine. If not, our meal is concluded. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. Let us sing, if you can sing, <laughs> hymn number 179, hallelujah, hallelujah, give thanks. Offering. Generous God, in light of your extravagant blessings and our imperfect lives, we offer our gifts and ourselves and know that you will transform what we plant into the produce of love. I invite Chris to share with us. Creator, 
mother of life, father of radical love. Here we are on the glorious resurrection morning. Thank you. Thank you for this joyful follow-up to the dark and sorrowful Friday we experienced. Even more than 2,000 years later, when we know what Easter morning will bring, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate again. In Matthew 28, verse 6, and in the choir anthem this morning, we hear, He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Thank you for the stone rolled away, for the women who found the empty tomb, for the disciples who listened and believed. Thank you for our risen Lord who taught radical love, and we thank you for feeling that love surrounding us, for knowing that Jesus is with us always, and for the opportunity we have to put that radical love to use every day. As we carry that love from here with us out into the world, we become more aware of the people and situations all around us that could use some or a lot of that love. Be with us, risen Christ, as we look out to the world and help us identify what can we do. There is so much struggle and conflict across the world. Help us hold these people so many people in our prayers. Some of them are our neighbors. There are so many people across the world living in poverty. They struggle with food security, housing, paying bills. They're in our neighborhood, too. There's so many people across the world impacted by violence, oppression, isolation, mental health or physical health concerns, and on and on. They are in our neighborhood, too. Empower us, risen Christ, to help. Show us, risen Christ, how to help. Be with us as we take our radical love into the world to make a difference somewhere, maybe even next door. Amen. Let us now sing the Lord's Prayer, and we're singing a different version today. It's found at uh, Voices United, number 959. This service has been a little bit different, so now we are getting to the announcements. They are printed in your bulletin. Um, can you go to the next screen, Carol? 
about our future ministry. Um, it's agreed that we are going to pursue an intentional interim ministry person. For pastoral care, um, while well, we are without a minister, um, for anything that's very emergent, you can give me a call or call the office and we will make sure that things are looked after. Our free concert that was postponed because of a almost like a non-storm. It stormed on the um, Friday morning that we were supposed to have it and we got a lot of snow and it was miserable and by four o'clock in the afternoon it was all gone and we could have had the concert. But we're having it this Friday instead and it's uh, Joe Calverly. He's been here with us in the on the organ uh, numerous times. The coffee hour sign-up sheets at the um, back and we ask that you put your names on any spot that you can and your costs will be reimbursed and we ask for people to take on the prep and clean up. Free soup supper, Wednesday, April the 10th at five o'clock. Everybody's welcome. Do we know what kind of soup we're having? Good soup? Good soup. <laughs> <laughs> the book club will meet after church on April the 7th to discuss the Alice Network by Kate Quinn. This is a really good book. I have read it. Uh, if you still need a copy of the book, ask Janet Snow. And the church office will not be open during the month of April. However, the phone and email will be monitored regularly and Sunday's bulletins will be continued to be prepared. And Diane says thanks to all who are covering for her. And that is our announcements. Does anyone else have any? If not, we will go on to our uh, benediction. It is early in the day, and we have discovered a great truth. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. It is early in the day, and we have gathered to give thanks. For Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. As spring brings forth new life, as the egg hatches a new bird, as bulbs bring forth new flowers, so God brings forth new promise, new life, new love. Jesus Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. And as you go from this place and time, may the God who loves all creation, especially the gardens we call our lives, and Jesus, our companion along this crooked path called life, and the Holy Spirit, who loves to improvise in surprising ways, go with you, dwell among you, and give you joy. Amen. And our closing hymn is number 187.
Amen.